Welcome to the first lesson in this complete AP Chemistry course. My name is Jeremy Krug. I'm your instructor, and I hope you enjoy these lessons. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to do so, I hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you can have full access to all of these uh, lessons for AP Chemistry. Now, this introductory lesson is about basic skills. Before we go into that, though, let's talk about what is AP Chemistry. Now, AP Chemistry uh, just is basically a, a course that's equivalent to two semesters of general college chemistry that's normally taken by all science majors in, in college. Uh, if you take this in high school, it's a very challenging course. And its purpose is to prepare students, like you, for university level science classes. Uh, if you take this course, you're going to expand your knowledge of matter, of the changes that matter undergoes, and you're going to improve your laboratory skills as well. And if you finish this course in May and take the College Board's AP exam, then you're going to earn, or you have the chance to earn, uh, several hours of college credit. So it is a very rewarding course in that regard. Now, in order to be in AP Chemistry, generally speaking, there are some prerequisites. Normally, you need to have completed a first year uh, honors uh, chemistry course with at least a B. That's generally uh, what's uh, required. Also, you need to be good at math. There's a lot of math in chemistry, and in order to, uh, to succeed, you got to be able to do some, some algebra. Now, when we say algebra, generally speaking, it means that you've completed Algebra 2 with at least a B, although if you're currently enrolled in Algebra 2, in Algebra 2, you can probably uh, get away with uh, being in this class as long as uh, you're a pretty strong math student. You also need to have a very strong work ethic. AP Chemistry is a very challenging course, like I mentioned earlier. It's pretty difficult, and so if you're a procrastinator or if you're just downright lazy, then you're going to have a pretty tough time in this course. Well, let's go ahead and jump in. Once again, welcome to AP Chemistry. So let's talk about some basic skills. There are several skills that we're going to discuss in this opening lesson. And the first one is dimensional analysis. And before I go much further, I do expect that you remember some things from your first year chemistry class. So when I say remember, well, one of the very first things we did in, in chemistry was convert from one unit to another. So you might remember being able to uh, do something like this. So let's say we have some ancient measurements, and I used measurements that you're probably not familiar with on purpose. Four unglies equal three inches, one cubit equals 18 unglies, and one inch equals three barley corns. So using that information, convert 6.0 cubits to barley corns. Well, you might remember that in dimensional analysis, the first thing that you want to do is write down what's given to you. So we're given this idea of 6.0 cubits. And so let's write that down first. So we're going to write 6 cubits, 6.0 cubits. And then after that, we're going to put cubits on the bottom of our first conversion factor. And so cubits on the bottom. And notice we can convert cubits to unglies. So I'm going to put 18 unglies over 1 cubit. And in dimensional analysis, whenever we have a unit on the top and a unit on the bottom, well, we can cancel those out just like this. Well, now we're in unglies, and so we can convert from unglies to inches. Four unglies equals three inches. So let's put four unglies on the bottom and three inches on the top in our next conversion factor. And we can cancel out unglies top and bottom, as you can see right here. Well, now we're in inches, and we want to be in barley corns. Well, one inch equals three barley corns, so I need to put three barley corns on top and one inch on the bottom. And so I can cancel out the inches once again, top and bottom. And now all I have to do is the arithmetic. So in my calculator, I would take the 6.0 times 18 times 3 divided by 4. Anytime there's a number in the, in the denominator, you divide times 3. And when you multiply and divide these numbers out, you get an answer of 243 barley corns. So 
hopefully that's something that you remember how to do. And if you've forgotten or just need a refresher, well, here's how you do it. Let's try another example. This time we have a school bus that's traveling down the street at 35 miles per hour. And that got cut off, but it says, how fast is the bus traveling in feet per second? And oh, by the way, here are some other pieces of information that might be helpful. One mile equals 5,280 feet, and one hour equals 3,600 seconds. So what you want to do first, as always, is write down what's given to you. So I'm going to take the 35 miles per hour and write it down just like this. And per means divide by. So 35 miles per hour means 35 miles divided by hour. So let's convert. Um, let's start by converting the miles to feet. So if I'm going to do that, then I need to have the miles on the bottom of my conversion factor. And let's put feet, 5,280 feet on top. So we're going to do that. Now we can cancel miles, top and bottom. And if we were to stop right now and just multiply, we'd have an answer in feet per hour, right? Well, we don't want to be in feet per hour. We want to be in feet per second. So let's convert the hours to seconds. Now this time we have to put hours on the top of our next conversion factor so it'll cancel and we can put the 3,600 seconds on the bottom just like this. So now we can cancel hour top and bottom just like that and now we can do our multiplication and division. So 35 times 5,280 divided by 3,600. So our answer is in feet per second, as we see here, and the number that we get when we calculate that is very close to 51.3. So that's how we can solve some simple uh, dimensional analysis problems here, 51.3 feet per second. Now another skill that you need to be able to, uh, to handle in AP Chemistry is significant figures. So this was one of those uh, simple basic skills we learned in first year chemistry, be able to give an answer with the correct number of significant figures. So for example, in the very first problem that we worked, we said the school bus is traveling at 35 miles an hour. How fast? Well, I gave you an answer of 51.3 feet per second. But was that an answer with the correct number of significant figures? Well, I'm going to say it's not. Because if we look at the question and the easiest way to do this is just to look at the question here. It says 35 miles per hour. And so that 35 has two significant figures. By the way, if you've forgotten how to count significant figures, I have a video dedicated to that. I will uh, put that uh, in the uh, description for this video. So since the question has two significant figures, guess what? My answer needs to have two significant figures as well. So I need to round this off using that next number as a, as a, uh, a rounding help there. So 51 and then the point 3, the 3 means we round down to 51 feet per second. We can say something very similar about the other problem we had. Convert 6.0 cubits to barley corns and we said it was 243 barley corns. Well, the question has two significant figures. So it looks like our answer should also have two significant figures, shouldn't it? So I'm going to round this using that 3 to round it down. It should actually be 240 barley corns. And so being able to handle significant figures is a pretty important uh, skill in this class. So one shortcut that I, I've I've taught AP Chemistry students to do for a while. Round things off to three significant figures. On the AP exam, if you round off every answer to three significant figures, then you will generally be okay. So let's say we have this uh, big long number here of this many moles, 0.02857142828 moles. To round that off to three significant figures, well, you want to read from left to right there and find the first non-zero number. So there's two, eight, well, five is the third one. And then the one after that is the one that you use for rounding purposes. So that's seven 
you know, it's a five or higher, so you round it up. So this is going to make this five into a six. So that's why the answer is 0 0.0286 moles. I'll try the same thing there for this very small number of liters. We find the first non-zero number, and then we count from there, one, two, and three, and we stop there, and that one makes it round down. So it's going to be 5.06 times 10 to the negative fourth liters. Here's another one. Sometimes you type a number into your calculator and you get a number that looks very, well, exact, for lack of a better word, two meters. How can you express that with three significant figures? Well, you just have to put a point zero zero on the end. So 2.00 meters. We can try this. Sometimes you get a repeating number. Once again, you want to take the, uh, the third, whoops, there's our first, second, and our third non-zero number, stop, and that nine bumps it up. It's going to be 1.00, okay, and once again, uh, you're going to have to, you know, cut off the last zero because you can only have three significant figures here. So that's the, uh, the answer. And we can try this as well. 299,792,458 meters per second. Well, to round that off to three, we're going to have to take, you know, the two, the nine, the nine, and then the seven bumps it up. So it's going to be 300 million meters per second, but you, you probably need to write that in significant uh, rather in uh, scientific notation, so that uh, it's a little easier to express that in uh, three significant figures. If you just write it as 300 million, then uh, you can't really tell that those ending zeros are significant. I want you to notice something as well. On every one of these measurements, I have a unit. In order for something to really be a measurement, it has to have a unit. In AP chemistry, well, in all of chemistry, we always express our units. Let's take a look at one more basic skill in this video here, and that's being able to work with SI prefixes. Now, there are lots of SI prefixes. You need to be familiar with uh, all of the common ones, but I'd like to focus on two in this video here. Milliliters and liters. We use those a lot in the laboratory in, in the lecture as well. And so if we have 940 milliliters, I expect you very quickly to be able to divide that by a thousand and say that that's 0.94 liters. Okay, that should be just second nature to you. You should not have to drag out a calculator and do that. Or how about this one? Uh, we have 0 0.00038 liters. I would expect you to be able to multiply that by a thousand and get 0.38 milliliters. Okay, and for some students who may have uh, forgotten, don't forget that to multiply by a thousand, you just move the decimal point over three places, you know, 0.38, and then to divide by a thousand, you take the decimal point and move it to the left three places, okay, 0.94. So this should just be second nature to you. It should not be anything very difficult. Same deal here, 25 milliliters or 25 mils as we sometimes say, divided by a thousand, 0.025. Okay, so you kind of get the idea there. And once again, um, I have several of these because I want it to be very quick, okay? I want you to be able to see 0 0.00575. You should be able to do these in like a second very quickly. 10 milliliters, you know, divided by a thousand, point zero one zero zero, just like that. Okay? And then 50 milliliters, same thing, point zero five zero zero liters. So once again, you should be able to do these in just like a second, almost just second nature. You should not need a calculator. It should just be second nature to you. Here's one that's a little bit more complex and looks like it's being covered by the camera, but be able to comfortably convert back and forth between meters and nanometers is what, is what that says. NM is for nanometers. So if we have this, uh, this here, 0 0.034 meters, I expect you to know that there are a billion nanometers in a meter. And so you need to be able to multiply the 0.034 times 10 to the ninth. You can do it on your calculator, you can do it in your head, however you want to, but it's 3,400,000 nanometers, or you just put it in scientific notation, you know, make that a little simpler to, to write. 728 nanometers, okay, once again, divide it by a billion 
to get it into meters. So it's going to be a very small number. So, you know, that many meters, or 7.28 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. 10 times 10 times 10 to the minus 7th meters, excuse me. So once again, this should be very quick, you know, just if you need a calculator, that's fine. Do it in your head, whatever. 210 divided by a billion. So 0 .000021. Uh, that's why we use scientific notation, right? And same thing. How many nanometers is that? This time we multiply it by a billion. We get about 48,000 nanometers. Okay, so here are a few basic skills. Uh, once again, I want to welcome you to AP Chemistry. Uh, and these three skills, we'll have some, a chance to practice those. If you like this video, or at least if you learned something, please give me a thumbs up because that's the way that YouTube uh, shares this video with, with other folks who'd like to learn chemistry as well. Don't forget to subscribe and join me again where we can learn some more chemistry together.